We at Around the Region have been deeply touched by the events that took place on September 11, 2001 in Washington, D.C. and in New York. Our heart goes out to those who have lost loved ones in the senseless act of terrorism. Nick, I was actually uh, approaching the Capitol when I realized something was terribly amiss. Uh, I knew as I left my house that there was a fire in one of the towers of the World Trade Center. But uh, for the first few moments, it was unclear as to what caused the fire or explosion. Also, as I was driving into the Capitol, obviously I saw a huge plume of smoke from the area that the Pentagon is located in. But to be honest with you, I thought about that, realized that the Pentagon was a concrete building and it must be an abandoned warehouse. Uh, but by the time I approached the Capitol building, obviously with the stream of people coming out, the increased law enforcement presence, uh, you knew something was desperately wrong. Uh, during that morning, by the time I arrived at my office, uh, the first tower had already uh, collapsed and it was recommended that we uh, evacuate the house office buildings. At that point in time, I was not in the Capitol building. Uh, many of the staff obviously were very concerned about their safety and others that they knew in the Washington area. And given the fact that I am on the defense appropriations bill, you become very concerned about those you work with on a daily basis and their safety at the Pentagon. Uh, most of our staff uh, did leave, as almost everyone did. Uh, my administrative assistant and one other staff uh, did stay behind. And then several police officers came into our office and said, no, this is not discretionary. Uh, you have got to leave the building now. I do think that uh, people should get on with their daily lives. Uh, I would be misleading you if I didn't suggest that the first time I was on a plane, I had some trepidation given the events of September 11, uh, but subsequently have flown three times. Uh, I do think it is safer to fly today, for example, than ever before. And additionally, I do think if we isolate ourselves, uh, if we change our daily habits, uh, certainly then those who wish us ill have one by changing our way of life. Uh, that's not to say that you should be reckless or uncautious, uh, but I do think uh, that we would all serve a higher purpose uh, by getting on with our normal life uh, and again approaching it in that fashion. Well, at first I thought it was just an accident, but then when the second one went in, uh, you automatically knew that it was terrorism of some type. Well, if you don't do something, then you're uh, automatically telling them that you're going to sit back and, and do nothing so that terrorism becomes more of a problem. Well, I think it's made the Americans wake up and not trust a lot of people. America will never be the same again after that day. Um, I was at home in the morning getting my kids ready for school and I was absolutely shocked. I thought it was an accident, like Jim said, until you saw the second plane hit and then it's just total disbelief. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, I think absolutely you need to do something. I mean, you don't want them to think that you're just going to sit back and, and take these kind of attacks. We, we don't need to stand up for our country, so. Well, I have said it all along. Uh, while I, you know, I was probably one of the first ones to say that what happened on September 11 was war, uh, that on the other hand, uh, this kind of war, uh, which is a totally new war, uh, will require much more diplomacy than military action. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, when you fight terrorists, who do you hit? Okay, you, you don't have a front line, you don't have armies uh, facing you. Well, uh, the result of what happened in September 11, of course, is uh, a reform of our security uh, agencies, uh, uh, our security system. And that will require, of course, uh, an infringement of some of our freedom. Well, the, the intention, the way I can figure it out, the intention of bin Laden, for example, is to um, get the United States totally out of the Middle East, uh, or, or the Muslim world, if you, if you like, you know, uh, to make us stop our uh, unconditional support of Israel uh, and um, to scare us indeed uh, to death. Uh, once we know where those terrorists are, we need to kill them. Uh, this is war. You know, it's not a question of bringing them to justice. Um, in a war, uh, you don't fight a war with, with a corpse. You fight a war with guns. 
Uh, so we need to kill them to make it indeed very dangerous to pause a, as a terrorist from now on. I was uh, up in Waterfront in Chicago and I was pretty devastated that they do something like that. Um, pretty crazy. I think that people should live their daily lives just like they normally do. Um, you know, take a few extra precautions but try to go about business as usual and uh, um, deal with the situation as best you can. Yeah, a little bit, but I was in the military too, so I understand these things a little bit better maybe. I thought it was an awful thing. I thought it was terrible. Really bad. I think they should go on with their life and hope for the best. Actually, my wife and I were on a uh, kind of a uh, long weekend trip out in Las Vegas and uh, having to turn the TV on and didn't really uh, believe what I was seeing. Um, end up, uh, you know, trying to get back uh, uh, on flights and by looking at the airport and the, uh, the videos that we saw at the airport, we just knew it wasn't going to happen real quick, you know. So what we end up doing, uh, end up going and uh, doing a little car shop and buying a used vehicle and uh, driving back uh, just to get home. You know, I've got confidence in, uh, in the Bush administration and uh, so um, I think so right now. first learned about the, the crisis at the World Trade Center, I was in my office just beginning my work day and received a phone call from, uh, actually from my sister, and quickly got to a TV set and, and literally saw the second plane coming in uh, and, and impacting the tower. Uh, my emotions and feelings uh, on this issue were, were, were um, hard. it's hard to express now because they were so numb by what I saw. What I saw on television um, had a greater impact from the standpoint of, of reality. Uh, however, I will say that because of movies and, and I think subsequent the, the amount of replay uh, on the event gave it a, a semblance of of uh, less than reality. Uh, it, it was almost like you saw a movie and you couldn't believe that it was actually occurring. Well, since the inception of logical management systems in our consulting practice, one of the things we've looked at with regards to the whole aspect of crisis management is to try to develop an all-hazards approach. And by an all-hazards approach, what, what I'm referring to is looking at all the potential contingencies uh, and then rank ordering them in the probability of occurrence. Uh, so yes, we would take into account on a planning basis that a plane could be used uh, in, an, in an assault like this. However, we would look at probabilities and with regards to the, the United States especially, there's less, there was less of a probability because of the measures we generally put in place. I think that's an interesting question. The intent of a terrorist, what, what is what is it and what is in their mind? Uh, I think traditionally we have seen terrorism used as a vehicle to express a desire, if you will, the terrorist wanting something. So as we see this change in ideology, you're also seeing a change in how the terrorist groups operate. Um, but I would say that their, their basic mode of operation is one to create panic, fear, uh, they're going to target and look at high-profile media targets that get them recognition. Um, the unfortunate aspect I think we're, what we're dealing with here today is that you can't pinpoint a single demand. What do they want? And it's a question that a lot of people ask. Well, what do they want? The fact is they haven't expressed what they want. They hate and they use hate as their vehicle. And it's hard to express what you want when you hate. Initially, you know, when, when it first came in, you, you, you think it's a uh, terrible accident, and, you know, what a tragedy, and, and you're concerned about uh, what's going on. But then, you know, within minutes, you see the second plane hit, and then you hear about the Pentagon, and you realize that it's a terrorist, uh, uh, a series of terror, terrorist acts. And there, there's a, like everybody else, I guess there's a, a number of emotions and feelings that come over you. Uh, dis they're all disheartening. They're, you know, uh, a uh, great concern, you know, the number of people that are dead, the uh, uh, lives that are wasted, and you know what's going on. I mean, just the fact of not knowing. One of the things that uh, really bothered me, and it, uh, I think, played on a lot of people. I if you remember that morning, it was really about four and a half hours before we heard from our president. I mean, we saw a videotape when he landed. We saw a, a short speech before he took off out of Texas, but then we saw in Louisiana when he stopped. But that was video, and we didn't really. 
you, you didn't realize what was going on. And to me, uh, I, I think back to some military days and some other things, and uh, that kind of put the, the magnitude of the situation in, in focus for us. I, ha I have some friends out in New York, and uh, within, uh, within a matter of hours, we were getting teletype messages like every other police agency and uh, fire agency. Uh, we were getting some information from the uh, New York and New Jersey Port Authority asking for assistance in doing things. So we started coordinating, to, to figuring out what we could do. We uh, monitored the situation pretty closely. I talked to some people, some friends of mine uh, out in the New York area. And uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, we contacted uh, several area departments, had a little meeting here, and tried to figure out what our resources would be if New York uh, decided they needed some relief effort. In the interim, it just seemed like we weren't that I wasn't doing anything or you know that it wasn't enough and uh, uh, just the personal feelings that I was uh, feeling myself and and I said uh, you know I, I told some people I said look I'm not going to sit around here and uh, I made some phone calls talked to a friend of mine I didn't want to go out as a sightseer I didn't want to go out as that I wanted to know that if I went out there uh, that it would be I'd be welcomed and that we could do something and I didn't care if it was direct traffic or hand out water or whatever and uh, I thought about it for uh, a few days and kept monitoring what was going on and uh, kind of watching the severity of it and uh, the, the difficulties that they were having. Picked up the phone on Saturday and I called a friend of mine and I said, look, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm coming out. I arrived Monday morning. I went right down, got down to my Manhattan. Traffic was terrible. I, got, I was able to get down. Not knowing where I was going or anything, I was able to get within uh, probably 10 or 15 blocks of where I was at and uh, the confusion and the uh, the, the enormous situation that was there, the uh, trucks that were in there uh, uh, bringing in boom, uh, boom cra crane booms and, and heavy equipment was, was phenomenal. Uh, you couldn't go anywhere. You can't go, in, they have bridges closed, they have tunnels closed. You can't go anywhere within 10 blocks of the trade centers without ID that shows that you live there or work there. The amazing thing to me was the, uh, the cooperation, the, uh, the dedication of the uh, firemen and the policemen. Uh, they've not given up. I was there for four days. They've not given up. I, still today I'm listening and I, I, I've called out there two or three times. It's still not, nobody has still declared that a recovery uh, project. It's still a rescue and recovery. While the chances are very bleak, those individuals are not giving up. Uh, it, they were there, they were involved in the collapse. They've been working 12, 16 hours a day and they're still working. The part that's just amazing to somebody like me, you go out to help because you want you want to do something and you feel like you have to. Everybody that I met, everybody, from store clerk to police officer to the construction workers, uh, the inspectors on the New York City Police Department, thanks for coming. I, I show, showed you uh, some pictures and you saw the one note in there. You know, my my friend, his wife, you know, when she left, uh, you know, thanks very much for coming. You don't know uh, how much that means to you. It amazes me that these people, you know, feel that way, and they and they all took the time to thank you for coming. They appreciate. They know. They know what's going on, and they uh, they appreciate. It. You know, freedom is not free. It, it comes with a cost, and I think we have to realize that. And I think maybe we've forgotten that. Uh, we need to live our lives, but we need to keep things in perspective. When we need to realize that, uh, uh, you know, that that it's going to cost us some, something. And, and unfortunately, I think right now we're going. We're overreacting a little bit. Uh, maybe to the point that we should have, I think it'll even out, and, you know, we'll start flying again and, you know, your towns and cities are safe. Uh, you know, these people came into this country and utilized every liberty that we have and they took the liberties that we, that we believe in and, and, you know, things that are defined in the preamble of the Constitution, all, they use them liberties to, to try to destroy us and it's not going to work. Uh, they don't have these liberties and they don't have these freedoms in other countries and this is by far the greatest country in the world and, uh, and we'll overcome this. Well, I would simply say that uh, during this time of upset uh, that we ought to remember that uh, the United States of America is a good country, it is a great country, and I do think that one of the defining characteristics is each generation of Americans has had a hope that the future and the next generation would be better and have a better life.